Welcome to the Alcorn Forum. I'm Dominique Woods and I will be your host. Today, we have one of Alcorn State University's finest men, Dr. Peter Malik. Dr. Peter Malik has been with us since 98 and is currently the professor of English and is a teacher of technical writing and composition. So today, Dr. Peter Malik is gonna share with us the do's and don'ts of what to do on a successful interview. So we're gonna start off the question how are you doing today? Good to see Dr. you. Dr. Malik. Good to be with you. The first question I have for you um, would be, what is an interview? Well, Dominique, the interview can be really the most important part of your job application. Uh, you put in your cover letter, your resume, you've gotten into the yes stack, you might say, and the company is uh, trying you out and you're trying the company out. And it can be an extremely uh, enriching experience for both parties uh, if it's done correctly. Okay. So my next question for you, why is an interview important? Well, basically, uh, uh, I used to work for a private company. and We would take, say, the top 10 applications out of usually 40 to 60. And we would interview 10 folks. And the top three would actually be called back for a second interview and then uh, the company would make a determination. So it's absolutely critical uh, in order to get the job. Well, I have my own personal question because I've been on quite a few interviews myself. What is it that puts an application on top? Well, you know, the cover letter resume gets you into what we call the yes stack. Uh, the person uh, making the determinations has a yes stack, a maybe stack, and a no stack. A no stack, uh, that resume will have typos, grammatical errors. The maybe stack is not really a perfect fit. Uh, you're applying for a copywriter, but you got a degree in uh, Spanish, for example. And a yes stack, perfect resume, uh, the qualifications and experience are a perfect fit. That's uh, one of the things I emphasize is um, you, you're being hired for your education and experience, not for anything else. And so that's what we look for. The company is looking for a good fit. Okay, so my next question for you. How do you prepare for a job interview? Well, uh, the most important thing is to research the company, especially the night before. Let's say you had the uh, interview Tuesday at 1, Monday night, you were going to go on their website. You're going to look at an icon that says uh, press releases about us, something like that. And you're looking for the most recent information. For example, let's say they had a press release that came out 5 o'clock the night before, and it said, uh, Mr. Cohen, the president, has decided to um, expand the company into 12 locations next year. Well, in the interview itself, the interviewer will say, why do you want to work here? And you say, why do I want to work here? You're a leader in your industry. I went to the website and I read your uh, President uh, Cohen's statement that you're going to expand to 12 locations this year. I want to be part of that growth. Well, it's one thing that I want us to know. Um, that I've always wondered. People, it's obvious that you wear a suit to interview, but is it true that you wear a specific color when you go? Because well, I know that's a question yeah, that a lot of people wonder. Yeah, it's a fair question. And you know, you can go on the interview, uh, inter on the website, inter the internet, and see all sorts of different things. What I say is your Sunday best. If you're, if you're wearing your Sunday best, you're probably not going to go wrong. Now is blue better than blue? It's marginal at best. Uh, but if you're uh, in that, you're, you, you want to look your most professional. Usually that's when we, we uh, uh, dress on Sunday. That's, that's what I say. Uh, yeah, that there's a lot of uh, information on the internet that's marginal about not only dress, but interviewing itself, but that's what I said. Yeah, because I know my mom would tell me all the time, okay, you need to wear tan or you need to wear black, and it would be confusing. So, the next question, what kind of research do you need to do for a job interview? Well, that's the most important part is the company, uh, half of the, the, I still keep in touch with the executives, they say half the time the uh, interviewee knows nothing, and it's an instant disqualification if you know nothing. But if you go in, like I say, and you, I understand you have uh, uh, eight resorts in four different states. I have one um, 
uh, applicant one time, she said, well, I know you're part of Mego Corporation and your stock closed at five and three quarters last night. Now that's a well-qualified applicant. As much as you can about the company, uh, there's plenty on the internet. So when you get the interview, if you're not 100% sure what the company name is, always ask and find out. There's another way to find out too, which I'll talk about in a minute. So the next question I have for you, how do you dress for an interview? Well, again, the dress is Sunday best, dress professionally. And what I tell my students that if you have an interview at Tuesday at 1 o'clock, you go 24 hours in advance, Monday at 1 o'clock for a lot of reasons. Uh, the most important is you're not sure where the location is, you make all your wrong turns the day before, you get to a giant office park, there are 30 buildings, they all look alike, you want 31, and it says 13, it might take you 20 minutes to find it. Another uh, tip, by going 24 hours in advance, you can see what everybody else, how uh, the folks who already work there are attired. Uh, occasionally, you go for a computer-aided design, and everybody's wearing Hawaiian shirts. So another tip that I can give, if you go 24 hours in advance, you can see how everybody else is attired. Well, I have another question about the dress code. When we're in a suit, are bow ties appropriate? Well, bow ties are, are, are okay. It's, um, uh, again, it, there's not, once you get into your Sunday best, you're probably there. And individual colors and, and that sort of thing, again, it's, it's marginal. Um, but you do want to look your best because when you look your best, you feel your best. Another uh, reason to go 24 hours in advance, let's say you're uh, in Houston, it's a hot day and you really don't want to look disheveled. So you go 24 hours in advance, you find a nice convenience store close to that building, have a soda, relax, maybe comb your hair once more. Um, so when you walk in five to eight minutes ahead of time, uh, you really look sharp instead of disheveled because you couldn't find it, you made nine wrong turns, you just barely made it. If you're one minute late for the interview, you won't get the job. Okay, so my next question for you, what is the first question of the interview? Well, uh, just to finish the conversation, you go Monday, uh, 24 hours in advance, go into the building. The receptionist is there, you say, I uh, have a meeting with uh, Mr. Smith tomorrow at one, is there any information you can give me? Am I in the right place? That's another good way to get information uh, about the company that's not on the internet. And she might say, well, yeah, here's the employee newsletter. It just came out two hours ago. So um, the other important thing is you find out where Mr. Smith is, you find out the office. When you go in to the office, don't go in with your head down saying this is gonna be the worst thing that ever happened to me. Look around the office. Is there a baseball trophy, football, fraternity membership, uh, diploma? And try to make a human connection, is what I say. Uh, there's a gentleman in Las Vegas I know, human resources director. His whole wall is covered with Chicago Cubs memorabilia. Why does he do it? He says, I want to start a conversation. Okay? I want to see the applicant in action. Oh, you're from Chicago. I have a friend in Chicago. Okay. So the first question is probably going to be, tell me about yourself, okay? And the key in the interview is, uh, you've got a clock in your head. There is, it's going to take about 15 minutes. So if you take eight minutes to answer the first question, you'll never get to the others, right? So uh, you can be very short and succinct. So I grew up in Jackson, Mississippi, I went to Alcorn State, majored in mass communications, graduated in 2012. Um, uh, in my spare time, I like to uh, uh, play golf, okay? And then you're going to make your answers succinct, be quiet, let that person react. Say, oh, I'm a golfer, and we start a human connection again. But if you're burning up eight minutes of time on the first question, you have a problem. Well, that's actually good advice because, like I said, I think when everyone goes in the interview, the first thing that goes through their mind okay, what is this person going to ask me? Right. So that's actually very good advice. So the next question that I have for you, what would be the hardest part of an interview? Well, the hardest part, the hardest question my students tell me, 
and basically it's one that's supposed to get you off balance it's supposed to make you think it's supposed to make you think on your feet and that's what your major weakness okay so a person is going to look you in the eye and say well, what do you think your major weakness is now what are you supposed to say to that that's a good question okay so you can ask me what my major weakness is. what is your major weakness my major weakness I'm really glad you asked me that my major weakness is that I'm just a little too much of a perfectionist. I can't let anything go unless it's perfect. Now, do I start on Monday? Maybe. But you see the difference between, well, I'm too much of a perfectionist, I can't let anything go unless it's perfect, and, okay, because if, you, if you're frozen, if you get the deer in the headlights thing, that's another example, well, this, you can't really think on your feet, you know, it's it's just a trap is basically it. So you want to go around the trap and you say, oh, well, I'm a perfectionist, I'm detail-oriented, and you're actually turning that weakness, of course, into a positive. Okay, so my next question for you, how do you negotiate a salary? Well, the salary you get to, again, there's probably 10 uh, questions. If anybody's interested in the 10 questions, they can email me. I'm on them. Of course, the Alcorn website, pmalik at alcorn.edu. Um, the last one is salary, and it's important because we're taught not to ask for money, we're taught not to boast. So it would be the question would be, what salary are you seeking? Okay? And the correct answer is, well, I went to salary.com and I found out that the average starting salary for an accountant in Jackson, Mississippi is $31,000 a year is that in your range and then very important wait be quiet and see what the man or the lady is going to say now what they're going to say is well it's a little high but yeah it's within the range because fact is salary.com this passionate third party uh, website and they do keep track of it so if you're going for that job it's probably 31 so that's what's going to happen, but I, yeah, I, there really is no other good answer um, because um, a lot of students, of course, are shy about uh, that conversation. So if you do that, it'll work. Yeah, I actually had a class, right, and he just graduated um, about a year ago, and he actually went to the website you were talking about with the salaries, and he was able to negotiate a salary and he told me that they tried to get over him at first because they thought he didn't know of it. But when they saw that he had, you know, had prior knowledge of it, you know, they negotiated with him. So I really do think that that's important when going into job interview, knowing the average salary of the position you're going for. So my next question to you, what to do after an interview? Okay, so uh, after the interview, you shake hands, you say goodbye to the receptionist, you get in the car, but you don't go home. What you do is you uh, have stationery in the car, okay, personalized stationery. You sit in the car and, and write a personalized note to Mr. Smith, your interview, uh, the person that interviewed you, and you say, I uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk with you today, enjoyed the tour. Uh, I'm even more excited about working here, all right? Then you fold it up, you put it in, put a stamp on it, and then you go to the post office in that uh, zip code, okay? Don't go home and do an email, it's what everybody else does. But I'm gonna go into the post office in his zip code, I'm gonna put it in the mail. Now, the next day, his receptionist is going through the mail, bill, 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 and then suddenly here's your thank you note. And everybody I've ever hired wrote that thank you note. Okay, not an email, personalized, handwritten thank you note that shows up the next day. That puts you over the top. Okay, well, that wraps up our interview. Is there anything that you would like to say for anyone who's? Well, it, uh, as I say there, if anybody's interested in, I have a handout, the 10 most common uh, questions. Uh, I mean, the handout it ha also has the 10 most common answers, but some of the answers that you see on the internet are not very good. So I can give you the 10 most uh, frequent questions, the 10 most frequent answers, and then the answers that I 
have kind of road tested over the uh, over the years. So again, P. Malik at Alcorn.edu. Be happy to uh, send it to you uh, if anybody's interested. More information. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you, and I'm pretty sure this information will do everyone justice. All right. Um, again, I'm Dominique Woods. This is the Alcorn Forum with Dr. Peter Malik, and thank you for coming.